So today we're going to talk about fiber art, uh, which is also sometimes called textile art, okay? So um, my experience is that a lot of people in this class, when I say fiber art, don't think that they know what it is. But when I start talking about it, you kind of do know what it is. So here are some different examples of media. Um, that's the materials that we make things with, right? We know that word by now. Um, that fall under the category of fiber art. So quilting, you know what quilts are. You might have a mom or dad or grandma or aunt or uncle or somebody who, who makes quilts. Weaving, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you exactly what that means um, in a minute, but you you probably have done some version of it, maybe in elementary school with paper even, weaving strips of paper over, under, over, under, over, under each other, that's weaving. Knitting, again, you might knit. It's kind of had a comeback uh, in recent years. Um, and a lot of people have relatives who, who knit. Crocheting, same kind of thing. Uh, they're very different techniques, but you know, you probably have some familiarity with what that is. Dyeing, so this is not like dyeing your hair, but it, it's the same idea. Um, dyeing materials, yarn, fabric, that kind of thing at home. And there are different kinds of things that you can do uh, within that category, like rust transfers and eco printing, which I'll talk a little bit about. And I have some additional lectures on those that I uh, will connect. Felting, so we have needle felting and we have wet felting, and I'll tell you what that means in a minute. Embroidery is another one that you might be familiar with. A, a subcategory of that is cross stitching. So I think. A lot of people at least know what cross stitching is if they don't do it. It kind of, I feel like embroidery, knitting, and crocheting have really had like a big comeback. First um, with uh, millennials, which is, we're now like old people like me. Uh, and then with Gen Z seems to be continuing some of these kind of DIY type things. So you, you might be familiar firsthand with embroidery, uh, knitting, or crocheting. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about soft sculpture and then string art, which is related to installation art, which we've talked about before. Okay, so first of all, quilting. Uh, when I say quilting, you probably have a pretty specific image in your head, and it's probably, um, uh, I don't wanna say old fashioned quilt, because people still do this, but the kind of quilt that's like a block quilt that has some kind of pattern. There's like the wedding ring pattern where the rings are intertwining. There's the log cabin pattern where there's these kind of blocks that look like little houses. So there's some very traditional kinds of quilts that have been uh, made in this country since the beginning of the country. They, it's a very old practice. And that those are quilts. There's also contemporary versions of quilts that look a little bit more like painting, like this one, for example. This is by uh, Shin He Chen. And um, so there's a lot of things that are quilts that may not look like what your expectation of a quilt would be. But for something to, be, to qualify as a quilt, to literally be defined as a quilt, it, is a, it has to be multi-layered, so more than one layer of textile, traditionally composed of three layers, which is a top cloth, a layer of batting, that's that like kind of like stuffing, but in a thin layer, um, and, a, and a back. And those three things have to be sewn together into one thing. And that's the quilting part, is stitching through those three layers. Uh, they can have more than three layers, but traditionally they have three layers. And those are combined using the technique of quilting. And that's, the quilting refers to the literal sewing them together, okay? So the process of sewing those three layers together is what makes it a quilt. If it's just one layer, um, it's not technically a quilt. It's maybe a wall hanging or a tapestry or something, but it's not actually a quilt, okay? So this is a quilt. Um, and like I said, it might be a different idea than what you've had of quilts before. It's kind of fun to see different kinds of quilts. This is me installing an exhibition uh, that had some quilts in it. This is a local contemporary quilt maker. So that piece to my right is uh, by Pam Rupert, who's a local artist, and it is a quilt. Um, if you zoom in on it, it has tons of little teeny tiny, very intricately done uh, stitches that, that stitch the layers together, but she does these kind of contemporary quilts that are sort of whimsical and, and funny, and a lot of them are um, kind of cartoon-like, which is very different than what I, when I was younger, before I knew more about fiber arts, thought that quilts were. So it's kind of cool if you look up quilts, and if you look up contemporary quilts, narrative quilts, art quilts, things like this, um, it'll kind of blow your mind. There's a lot of different kinds of quilts that are being made. 
weaving. So weaving is another um, textile traditional method, technique, and it is possibly one of the oldest forms of art. There's evidence um, in like 40,000 year old prehistoric uh, Paleolithic caves that people were weaving um, all the way back kind of before people were people. So it's a very old art form. It also has traditional connotations, um, but what weaving is, just as a different definition, is a method of textile production in which two distinct sets of yarns or threads are interlaced uh, to form fabric or cloth. And the most simple kind is where you have your warp, those are the threads that go vertically, and your weft, those are the threads that go horizontally, and they just go over and under each other. But by changing the patterns in which you interlace them together, you can come up with all different kinds of patterns. And some of them are quite uh, non-traditional, like this example, this is by Terry Friedman. And uh, this is a woven piece that doesn't do your standard over under over under and it's using lots of different weights of yarns and creating this very different, um, very texturally heavy, very vibrant colored kind of work. And so Terry is working now contemporarily. She's a, a Bay Area artist in California. She shows uh, nationally. Um, and then here is a floor loom. So you can weave just with like a piece of cardboard and some string. You can weave on a frame. There's all different ways to weave, but this is sort of a traditional floor loom. And you can see there's quite a few parts here, right? So you can um, create lots of very complicated patterns and there's all different kinds of weaving. I taught a class on fiber arts for about a decade. Um, so if you're interested in this topic, I'm happy to send you more information about the history of weaving and that kind of thing. But basically the thing to know is that quilting is taking at least three layers and stitching through them together. Weaving is taking at least two threads or yarns and weaving them, interlacing them over under over under, though you can vary that pattern. Okay, here's an example of a uh, branch weaving that one of my former students made. So you can literally weave on kind of anything. Knitting. So knitting is another thing that you maybe have a specific connotation. Um, a lot of our sweaters that we wear are knit. They are factory knit on machines usually, unless someone you know made one for you. Um, but knitting is where you make a garment or fabric by interlocking loops of one or more yarns either by hand or with knitting needles or by a machine. So a lot of people confuse knitting and crocheting. If you have two sticks called knitting needles, that is knitting. You go like this. If you have one hook called crochet hook, that is crocheting. Okay, but they're both about interlocking loops. And knitting generally, um, People tend to think, I think about like afghans, you know, like throw blankets, sweaters, scarves, hats, mittens, that kind of socks, that kind of thing is being knit. And those generally are all knit, but also contemporary artists use knitting in very different ways. Like this uh, knitted sculpture by Anita Bruce, where she's knitted these little kind of vessel cocoon like things. And then she has needle felted pieces inside, which we'll talk about what needle felting is in a minute. So again, can be used in kind of different ways. Crochet. Crochet uh, is a similar technique to knitting in that you're interlocking uh, loops of yarn or, or thread together, um, but it's a very different process. A lot of people either knit or cro crochet. I've not met very many people who do both. I can knit and I crocheting is very difficult for me. I'm not sure why, um, but I know very few people who do both. But anyway, so knitting two needles Crocheting, one hook, okay? So crochet is needle work done with a hook, <coughs> with a needle having a small hook at one end for drawing the thread or yarn through intertwined loops. This is a piece by Olek. She's a very famous yarn bomber. We're gonna talk about what yarn bomb means uh, in a minute. Um, so again, you think of crochet as like granny squares, afghans, things that you uh, wear or throw blankets on couches, things like that. Um, but it can be used for things like installation art like this, where she's crocheted a uh, pink sweater all the way around the charging pole on uh, Wall Street. So um, I'm part of a group called the Yarn X Bombers. We do uh, yarn bombing locally. This is from a few years ago. Gosh, I guess it's been, I think it was in 2015 when we did this, 
where uh, if you recognize this sculpture, it's the Sun Target sculpture that's outside the Springfield Art Museum at the corner of Bennett and National. <coughs> it's 1,700 square feet of surface, and we covered the entire thing in uh, knitted and crocheted panels, which was pretty fun. Okay, felting. So felting, there's a couple different ways to do it. So it's a consolidation of fibrous materials by the application of heat, moisture, and mechanical action, causing the interlocking or matting of the fibers possessing felting properties. That's wet felting. So basically you just take this fibers, like wool felts really well, and you agitate it, you rub it together, you get it hot, and you get it wet, and then all the fibers tangle together and it creates a mat. It's kind of like if you have a really bad tangle in your hair, that's felt trying to, to occur. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is with needle felting, where you take a barbed needle and sort of rip the fibers through each other. You're just pulling the fibers through each other to cause them to interlock without moisture. This is a needle felted piece by a former student of mine that's on top of a eco print that she embroidered on as well. Okay, this is a three-dimensional needle felted piece by another former student of mine. Um, and basically, you just use these special kind of needles to pull all the fibers through each other until they get hard enough and become their own kind of form. Uh, embroidery. Embroidery is the art of working raised and ornamental designs in threads of silk, cotton, gold, silver, or other material upon any woven fabric, leather, paper, etc. with a needle. So um, embroidery is just when you're making stitches on a material and you want those stitches to be seen. So they're altering or embellishing the original material in some way with the stitch work. There's all different kinds of um, stitches. I'll uh, post something, a video from my fibers class that, that uh, is about slow stitch, which is a project I used to assign in fibers where I go through some of the different embroidery stitches. Um, but there's lots of artists who are using this again in kind of non-traditional ways. I think embroidery always brings up in my head like those old-fashioned tea towels that you would have, uh, you would see in kitchens, like my grandmother used to have these, and they'd have like little flowers and things embroidered on them. That is what I think of, a, a, used to think of when I thought of embroidery, or like initials monogrammed on something. But a lot of contemporary artists use embroidery in very different ways, like this piece by Lynn uh, Squirtle. These are some slow stitch projects uh, from former students of mine where they've dyed the originally white fabric using eco print, rust transfer, and um, home hand dyeing. And then they've stitched on them using different embroidery stitches to embellish them. Soft sculpture. Soft sculpture is a kind of sculpture made using cloth, foam rubber, plastic, paper, fibers, and similar material that are supple and non-rigid. So basically exactly what it sounds like. Um, so for a long time in the history of art, sculptural forms were um, sort of limited to stone, metal, uh, and then ceramics, things like that that are hard, and uh, resin, which is also hard. And then um, that definition expanded quite a bit, um, particularly with the feminist art movement in the 60s. Um, one of the earlier soft sculpture artists, maybe the earliest soft sculpture artist, was uh, Yayoi Kusama. She's famous for her infinity rooms. We talked about her when we talked about installation art. But she also made soft sculpture installations and was kind of a forerunner of this technique and saying, hey, three-dimensional work doesn't have to be rigid and hard and made out of stone or metal. It can be made out of uh, soft things, too. Um, probably the most notable soft sculptor working today is Sarah Lucas. There's lots of soft sculptors, but um, she's who I really think of when I think of soft sculpture today in contemporary art. Um, this is one of her pieces called Pauline Bunny. She's uh, one of the YBAs, the Young British Artists, which is kind of a collective group. Um, they're not that young anymore, <laughs> they're older than me, but um, that's just how they're uh, described. Anyway, so she does these kind of works where she uses found objects um, like pantyhose uh, to create these sculptural kind of things. Okay, uh, string installation. So if you go to the Springfield Art Museum, which you most of you did for an assignment, some of you had medical issues or were out of town and so you had to go online instead of going in person, 
but if you walk down that first hall from the lobby back toward the galleries, you may have noticed a string installation called Tilted Sky. So that's an example of a string installation. Um, but string art or string ins art installations are often specific works that utilize string to define a space. And one of the artists who's getting a lot of international attention right now who works like this is Shiharu Shiota. Uh, so Shiota makes these really beautiful, intense, um, kind of eerie pieces. Uh, she works pretty much in red, black, or white. And she uses some found objects, but she makes these big net-like things that hang from the ceiling um, and really alter the space uh, when you walk into them. Here's another one of hers. Those are keys suspended from all that string and then a boat in the middle. So um, that's just working with string independently and not necessarily doing any knitting or crocheting or weaving with it, just using string to define a space. Um, so there's a lot of different kinds of work that can be done that are in the fiber arts realm. There's also handmade paper work. There's um, basket weaving techniques that can be altered and used in different ways. So this is by no means an exhaustive list of uh, fiber techniques and works, but this is just kind of an introduction to this kind of art, which I think is a little lesser known than the other things we've talked about, like painting and photography. Okay. So that is fiber art, and I'll tell you more about yarn bombing in a minute.